Another video. Sorry, keeps happening. So anyway, response video to Antikantavad. So um, it's basically a um, short video. I don't know if I'll play it or not. I think I can paraphrase it fairly, and uh, we'll see. Maybe I'll find it necessary to play it for some reason. Um, so um, you know, sort of a concession, which is nice of him, and you know, I appreciate the response. He does get um, aggravated, <laughs> um, and. Uh, is not very responsive often, um, and his style is this, you know, it's a three-minute video. I appreciate that he listens to my 50-minute video and then posts a three-minute video, um, and it's not a direct question. I don't know, you know, I mean, he phrases the response as questions, what is religion, bad science, question mark, um, and, but he's agreeing that it is a kind of bad science, and, uh, uh, you know, and, well, I'm just saying I appreciate the fact that he responded to this particular video just because I think my previous video was, you know, one of my ten best kind of videos. So I think it was a really good explanation um, of this. Yeah, it was good. It was a good video. I mean, it was well argued, um, good metaphors, good analogies, good stuff. Um, so I'll have to resort to some metaphors and analogies again because that is part of trying to make comparisons and when you get to this rudimentary number you know this rudimentary thing of this idea of negative and positive of repulsion and attraction the very idea the very nature of good and bad uh, it always becomes metaphorical because we feel it all 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 references to good and bad are references created based on how it affects a sentient organism the whip and the carrot these are only meaningful things when the thing itself is going to be in, put in some sort of positive or negative state. So again, we're stuck with these words. And all the words are essentially metaphors, analogies to the thing we can't explain. So that's sort of his argument here. There's this part of reality that's outside of the scope of explanation. And words are difficult. It's true, and I've argued that much of the limitation and much of the fact that we can't have a rational conversation about these experiences is because the language is so broken, it's so archaic, it's so stuck in the old science. We don't have a new scientific language, and therefore it gets really tricky because it's like the tail bones connected to the leg bone, kind of, you know, it's all too simplistic you know, the leg bone, like, you know, like that tells you what a leg is, you know, I mean, it just doesn't work, um, it's not a scientific language, it's a, it's a human language, it's an animal's language, and, and it's obviously been conformed, suited to, uh, religious conversation, bad science conversation, so that's another critique I've made, is that you're, you're requiring the science to use a broken language to describe uh, a non-tangible thing, a non-materially touchable. Clearly I can touch my computer, I can touch the CPU, I can touch all its little parts, but that doesn't mean I can touch the software, you know, in the sense where I could feel my way to understanding, oh, it's going to make a graphic now. I mean, I can't use my, my fingers to tell me what's going to show up on the screen. Um, so the material connections are abstractions or, or disconnections. And so we can only dissect them, you know, put them, we have to use some other means to reconstruct them. We can't just feel it or hear it uh, or see it. Um, and yeah, our experiences are like that. They're hidden in the nuance of our, the wires, the neurons firing, the synapses, the whole bullshit, the chemistry, the blood pumping, all of that crap. It's hidden in the nuance of all that stuff, and you can't just lay your hand on it, <laughs> you know, like a religious gook, and say, I get you. I see you. Can't do that. <clears throat> um, realistically. Um, all right, so to use these language, I mean, you know, it just has to be carefully constructed languages. I guess my argument is that, so he kind of turns it around and comes up with a sentence like, um, maybe science is bad religion or something like that 
are a bad science is bad religion or something. Well, anyway, maybe I should play it just to clarify that. Um, we, we just, but it's more word play um, in the sense that if you take science's ambition, you know, its mission statement, and you clarify what that mission statement is, and if I just say the purpose of science is to accurately describe reality, okay, then we know that it can't be a bad religion because that's not the purpose of religion. So we could agree that when I use the statement that religion is bad science, I'm saying it's a bad attempt. It's a sloppy attempt. It's a an ignorant attempt um, to accurately describe reality. That's not what it's doing. It's trying. It's doing something else. Okay? It's not... Um, it's not trying the, the limits of its, its mission statement. Okay? It's more about give me a feeling, give me a solution. It's not about the actual fact of doing this accurate description thing. And that's what science is doing. And so now we're just, in the end, going to get into this argument, I think, where the, where the contention is going to lie, is he's going to say that there is no way to accurately describe uh, experience. Uh, there's no way to accurately understand it. That would be the other part of it, to, to understand it in context, you know, to, to get a big enough picture. And that, um, you know, in the end, all we're looking for, all you get out of science, the, the mission, the, the underlying mission, the reason why understanding matters, the, understand, the reason why an accurate description matters, is because of application or action. And the idea is we want to perfect action. If you do something, do it well. Kind of simple overriding rule is that everything we do um, should be done the best it can be done. Why not? If I'm going to wiggle my finger, I should be wiggling it the best it can be wiggled. Kind of crap. If you're making a if you're making something, you want it to be the best it can be made. You know, even if it's a recipe on a cake box, you want to make the best cake you can make out of a cake box. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to, you're trying to do perfectness. You're trying to do the best you can do. What's the best I can get out of the energy that is this thing? I mean, that's to me the ultimate question. As a, as a thinking human, you're the best you can do is to say, to understand that you're a thing and you're trying to get the best out of this thing. And this thing's doing two things. One of them is feeling comfortable and one of them is affecting things that will feel comfortable or uncomfortable. Not, that doesn't seem out of the scope of being a, uh, an accurate description of our reality, is it? You know, that we have two, two producers of value in our existence to machines that produce something of this carrot nature or this unwhip nature to make it even you know more conducive to my negative utilitarianism uh, you want to unwhip the world there's whips going off kapow 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 and you're just trying to say how do I how do I unwhip the world and there's whips inside my brain so I want my brain to be unwhipped I want it to be able to rest in bliss to just go, ah, oh, excellent. Yeah. Uh, and But I also want, in the rest of the world, the whips. I don't want to make whips to have my bliss. I don't want to hear a crack of a whip every time I get a little bliss. I mean, just logically, scientifically, we can figure out this economics. So that's what it comes down to, is it's, there's, a, there's an economics to it. So it's a, like an economic theory, um, which is like a system design theory. There's a system here. There's an input and an output. And you're just trying to maximize the consumption, the, the negative produced, the emissions from the car, and maximize the output. You know, how many miles you get to the gallon. And we have the same parallel kind of functionality. Um, I think that's a scientific fact. I think that's a decisively, demonstrably, <clears throat> accurate description of our reality as a fundament. It's just a 
as just a foundation of, of overt, obvious perception. This seems quite honest and fair description of our reality. I feel, they feel. There's two kinds of ways to feel. Not good and good, or, or not bad and bad. However you want to, like I said, however you want to weight those. It doesn't, like I said, I don't care if you make a world that's all carrots or a world that's all whips. The point is, is understanding the record, you know, it's not about whether it's getting pushed or pulled. It's about the movement. Um, you know, it's about the difference between the two places it could be, left or right, good, bad, attraction, repulsion. Um, so I think it's a scientific subject, experience. <clears throat> I think it's, it's demonstrated, it's decisively demonstrable through, through logical observation. You know, just taking the pieces and putting them together. The, the simple pieces to understand basic concepts like I'm not magical uh, my consciousness isn't extremely special it's nuanced it's different eddy, every eddy in a stream is different okay but they're not <clears throat> different in a significant way they're different in insignificant ways just as snowflakes or you can use a million examples the significant differences don't exist, yet there is uniqueness. Um, and I think that's a fair, again, a fair scientific observation of reality. That there isn't, there might be 20,000 chimpanzees. They're all different, but they're all chimpanzees. You know, we know what a chimpanzee is. We know what a basic human is in terms of a manufacturer of experience. So we can we have the huge scientific advantage in this in this description of reality of having experience. We actually have it. <laughs> you know, it's right here. I'm doing it. So I can observe it. I can just look at it and have it and say and I can make descriptions of it. I can describe what it is. I can do that. And I certainly can describe the extremes of it, which are the highly enjoyable versus the highly unpleasant. Those I certainly can make distinctions between. I can certainly qualify through testimony of this distance between these things. Um, and they're, they're the nature of them having this value component. It's certainly something quite obvious and I think I don't think a rational counter theory can be proposed um, that would uh, have some logic to demonstrate how the good is really bad and the bad is really good or something like that. I mean the experiences in and of themselves. Um, so I think it is all scientifically describable but we have to do it with this language and the minimum, I guess, what, 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 I'm, what I'm recognizing is that, yes, it has to be very carefully stated because every word people put emphasis on and you have to be so cautious in how you describe what's, what you're doing, even in writing a sentence or composing a statement. You have to dissect it. Like I said, the, I, we say the word science. For me, science is accurate description. For somebody else, science is um, usefulness, you know, functionality. Uh, it has some other describer than this more purely dissected one of accurate description. Um, you know, discovery is a description. In, by buying definitions, there's equal signs on there. When you discover, you describe, you understand. These are all connected words. And, uh, you know, they, and then it's just getting to the point of what's the, you know, the value of it, in and of itself value, doesn't really exist, but in a, in a practical way, there's no other way it can be valuable than it's always going to affect perception of application, you know, how it's applied, how is the information applied. And clearly, I would say it's, that's also part of the science. 
is recognizing the context of the application. If you're just, if the only thing in the universe is you, then you can play the chess without worrying about the pawns and the bishops and the kings and everything, because it's just you that matters. But if you understand the context that, no, the game you're playing is a bigger game, well then you have to account for the, the change in that system. And science can do that. I think science can understand. It can let you know that you're not just the only piece on the board. It can, it can expand your understanding of the system in terms of your attempt, the usefulness. Usefulness isn't, does it make you happy? I think scientifically you can argue that that's not a rich question. That's, a, that's a, one of those religious questions. It's almost preposterously ignorant to think that that's a meaningful question because it has to be stated in the context of what will be the implications of your happiness. How much will it cost in terms of the welfare of the others that you're living with and the future that will live on the ground you've soiled and stepped on. Um, every time we dent the world, you know, we might be creating a an obstacle in the future. Some future president might trip on a dent I put in the planet <laughs> and die. And he would have saved the world. Blah, 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 blah. You know, these, these, the fact that we are, you know, in a game that's in, in, in preposterously complex means that that's certainly a limitation on our science. We can't accurately describe every event and every probability and every possibility and every inevitability. That we can't do with science. We can't do it because we don't have the instruments to do it. We don't have the calculator that can hold the big enough numbers and do all the decimal points um, because the interactions are so complex. But we certainly can do the obvious and we can certainly recognize probabilities and we can recognize um, some equations are quite obvious. Some cost-to-benefit analysis is not complex. It is overt and obvious that there's low probability of any success, preposterously low. I could wish the moon to crash into the earth. There's a low probability of any success in this wishing function. It's never been demonstrated to have any power whatsoever. Um, so it wouldn't be good to count on it. That can be a scientific statement. Low probability of success. And religion has a low probability of creating anything but maybe delusionally happy people. But they won't be constructively interacting in the world because they don't understand the world they're interacting with. Uh, I suppose it could be argued that science can give us a reliable, like GPS kind of map of the world. Science can spell a lot out for us so we know where all the turns are. So even a blind man could navigate the world. Uh, but religion, religion puts roads where they don't exist. Religion puts all kinds of stuff where it doesn't exist. It, it describes uh, uh, fantasies, not realities. And those fantasies will drive people off cliffs in terms of their functionality, in terms of what they do to the game. Because they won't be, their strategy, their action won't be consistent with the map of the game. Uh, because their description of the game is inaccurate. Now, that's probably enough context, that's probably enough add on. Um, yeah, yeah. I, uh, underlying all this again is is I can't do much if you have a intuition or a want for there to be a more complex game that we're playing than just some um, trading off of welfare states between pawns. You know, this is just a bunch of pawns on the board, and they're told they're just it's just said go. You know, and they just fight with each other to gain comfort. Because you sort of have to build it out of somebody else's discomfort in most cases. 
it's really hard to draw a picture of pawns just floating around, getting along, no problem. No, you no, know, because they have to eat and they have to shit. And they have to eat and they have to shit. And then if they have engrandized perceptions of their own value, right? Then they have to have proper fuckables, and they have to have proper, you know, mansionables and ego grandizables. They have to be able to climb up on top of their mansion and look out at the world and be overviewed to it, and because they have a feeling, you know, and you know, it's a synthetic feeling. Um, I mean, it's just another one of these things. It's, I mean, the truth is, I mean, I could have said religion is just mental masturbation it's just a you know yes it's a it's a it's a, it's a shortcut <laughs> um, to gratification but again gratification in the context of I'm feeling strong I'm feeling comfortable doesn't mean much when you're in this sea of of interactables that are going to pay a price for your comfort so it doesn't mean anything it's it's your comfort is is diminished, destroyed, obliterated, the value of it, um, by the discomfort your inefficiency is creating. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, you know, but yeah, we're always going to argue about the value of this experience thing, um, because uh, of a more fundamental disagreement that may not exist on the level of, of pure fantasies regarding some bigger purpose of the universe, um, but it might just come down to this idea that you, maybe you are seeing it all as, as, as carrots, and that uh, lacking carrot is bad and having carrot is good. And I'm going to argue that, no, the real mechanism, the real generator of the value is this whip thing. And so there is no way to have um, too little whip. You know, it's always bad. So you're always going to see it as good because it's all just how much carrot. And I'm going to always argue, no, it's just degrees of bad. If I make you immune to disease, you're going to be happy. <laughs> you know, if I make you immune to all the negatives, loneliness, sadness, disaffectedness, uh, impotency, whatever, all the negatives. The negatives are the things that make us unhappy not the positives. It's the absence of the negatives. Your only recourse, once you've eliminated all your problems, is to go, <sighs> But anyway, that's probably what we're going to get stuck on. Um, but I guess for the purpose of this video, I think, it, I think it's just perfectly rational to recognize religion for what it is, which is honest attempts, but bad attempts at describing reality and that the whole notion of creating outside of ourselves over their theories of our existence was just a big stupid mistake there we're not we're not puppets on the string of some master that's some some better game being played somewhere else and we're the pieces no, the game is below us. It's a DNA molecules game. The strings are coming from the ground, not from the, the top. It's the game itself that farted us into existence. You know, not some player of the game. And it was that fundamental miscalculation. They got that fundamental truth wrong. You know, it's the hell that came first not the heavens. Yeah, something like that. So anyway, thanks for the response. And uh, I hope this helped in some way.